What's up? What's up? This is the Boss Ladies Live radio show. Speaker Studio, sponsored by Boss Ladies Inc. Yeah, what's up, y'all? Welcome to the Spirit Success Series on Sundays at 9 p.m. Check me out from 9 to 9.30 or to 10, depending on how far, you know, the Lord guides our way to study and research our retransformation for some of us and for some of us transformation into spirituality. I am not a religious person. I was for many, many years. Um, through this series, I'll be discussing some stories, um, misleading and what I learned. And also, too, how to determine who's the best minister to your spirit. So I'm going to go to the playlist right now and see what I want to do. So let's get something smooth going here. Got all my stuff on here, y'all. So hold on one second. Yeah, let me know if you want to be a guest on the show. Um, also, let me know if you, you know, um, got anything that you want to discuss. Um, let me know what you think about the previous shows. I do thank for the supporters. The top shows last week were Reunion Season 3. And I got to think of the other one when I come back. I have to take a look at it. So, yeah. So, I'll be back. Don't go nowhere. One.
don't change mind, no change heart. You still in the same spot as when you got up that morning. Got some guts and got dressed and went to church. Let's talk about that. Are you ready to think successful? Are you ready to be a spiritual thinker? We can talk about that too. Same old habit. Same old thought. But who's ready to achieve spiritual success? Hey y'all, what's happening? Boss ladies in the building. You already know what's up. You know, spiritual series. You already know the rules. Keep your cussing ministries and cussing organizations to a minimum. Men, women, and children are welcome. And we're going to have a positive show. So let's get down to business. Has something I want to share from a great book that I read. It got me back in touch with my spirituality. It was hanging around in somebody's library and it looked interesting. Um, It says, Danny Johnson, conquer fear and poverty mindset, unlock the doors to true wealth, prosperity, riches, and happiness, spirit-driven success. Learn time-tested biblical secrets to create wealth while serving others. I said, I'm going to pick up this book and read it. School is in. And in this book, I can only point you towards the source of what guided me through some incredibly difficult times. This source is the only one that was able to penetrate my heart, start me on a new path, and bring me to where I am today. And believe me, I know. I've tried many different and misdirected ways to get at the truth. The last thing I want to come across as is a Bible-thumping fanatic who wants to shove scripture down everyone's throat. However, I do want to tell you the truth about what happened to me and how the God that is revealed through scripture has been faithful to all his promises. Through the transformations I have seen in my own life and in the lives of my clients, I believe that the Bible is the greatest success book ever written. It is jam-packed full of wisdom, insights, and messages. God's direct communications with us. I have read the Bible from cover to cover several times, and each time I am blown away at the treasures that are hidden in the stories, the situations, the characters, the Psalms, the Proverbs, and the parables. Although each story in the Bible contains some obvious lessons, the real treasures are sometimes buried a little bit deeper. My hope is that you will discover the mentor, coach, encourager, and loving Father God who knows your heart and wants to satisfy your every need. Since I began my relationship with my Lord and Savior, He healed my heart and set me free to live a life bigger than I could ever ask for or imagine. If you are one of those seeking to reclaim that true vision for your life, then it is time for you to find your path, uncover your true gifts, and step forward into the journey that God has planned for you. It is time to turn your back on the life you lived before. It is time to turn your back on the things that have been holding you back. Set your sights on achieving a success wilder than you can even imagine and choose a path of higher calling 
the path God intended for you. Start living your life with spirit-driven success. That was an awesome book. It not only taught me a lot of things about how the true God, the Most High, Yahweh, and how He cares about me and why He died for me and how I could be transformed through that sacrifice that He made some umpteen years ago. Um, like I said, I'm not a scholar or a Bible thumping teacher that want to shove things down people's throats. I never wanted to do that because I never liked it when people did it to me. You know, you got to do this and say that and be this and do that. And I, I found out that I could never fit in with that. I, I, I wasn't comfortable with the dress code because I never dressed like that. But at the same time, I was hearing, come as you are. Well, what did that really sincerely mean? I know I can't come naked. But I didn't have a suit dress with a little cute jacket and the jewelry and the button up all the way to your throat under your chin. Because I ain't dressed like that. Like I told you in earlier shows, I was coming from the hip-hop era. I had no clue how to dress for church. Now, yeah, my mom was in the church, and she, you know, spilled her little beans and her little dis disciplinarians and her rules and regulations on how you should look, but I didn't feel comfortable doing that. I was taught, like, I was made to believe in God. I was made to go to church, like... It was a norm after so long of doing it. And then, you know, with me and my creative thinking, and I can say this now without being too overconfident, I got creative. I said, how can I make going to church fun? So what I discovered by other people, and this was like my biggest downfall, the other people group, the them, they, and whoever there started telling me, oh, you got a nice singing voice. You used to sing in the church. You used to sing for God. Okay, I did that. I sung and sung and sung. I didn't feel the lyrics that I was singing because other people would get up there and sing and they'd be bawling, teary-eyed, dropping to the floor on their knees, praising and worshiping something or someone that wasn't there. I think I got. Now I'm going to say I don't think. I, I know. From looking back at the day. With the perspective of thinking that I had. Because the images that were painted in my head. Is, is in childhood. I was taught to go to church. Because it was the thing to do on Sunday. It never dawned on me it was a reasonable service that I was sacrificing things that I didn't that I wanted to do for things that I didn't want to do because of what was took in place at the cross that day on Calvary. I wasn't even here. A lot of you wasn't here. Maybe none of you wasn't here. And if you're here from back then, congratulations, you made it. <laughs> Just to take the load off the seriousness of this spirituality. And that's another thing. You know. It was serious to go to church. But as far as a relationship with the Lord. As far as you know. Reading the Bible on your own. Um, getting to know him for yourself. I heard all of that. But I never. And like I said I was a rebellious child. But. If they did do it, I didn't see it because I was so tired of being made to do something that I didn't look at it as something that I should want to do. That it was my duty to do because somebody honored me before I was even here. 